Must have been luck. Um, well, I feel like the panel kind of covered it quite well. I no I look at this uh, Gaming Gladiators lineup and I see a lot of their... Okay, hang on. Wait, are they actually going to find an angle here? This is a pretty interesting smoke path from OG, so I'll hold my horses for a moment. Okay. If they get in behind. In the meantime, Tomato will break Gaming Gladiators out. Yeah. This is very interesting. Oh, gee. This is not an angle that Tofu is likely to expect here. Watch out for that dead shot from Ari. Oh, he's in trouble. Now he sees him. The slows are there. Illusory Orb and Seb on the other side to block. Only question is who is getting the first blood? Blood Grenade as well. And it will be Seb on the Crystal Medin. First blood for you. Congratulations to Seb. Can yep. now retire for the twelfth time in his career. Yep, a happy man. He'll be back tomorrow. Um, yeah. So Gaiman, they have some of their really classic stuff, right? Celery on his end. They're playing a tempo carry. This time it's going to be the Weaver by Duraccio. You have Tofu on his bat. The Leshrac is also a Gaiman Gladiator staple. So I feel like they're running some very, how to say. Some of their characteristic heroes, but maybe not necessarily in the pairings that they have had the most success with. I think the Weaver Ench has been very good for them, but oftentimes their good Lesh games are with Io, for example. The Axe is a little bit of a curveball. Uh, OG are playing what I would consider overall more meta for this patch. You know, strong team fight with the Brewmaster Puck in the Void. Um, so the, it's a clash of styles. And we've seen Game and Gladiators take over games of this type in like 20 minutes, especially with their Ench. Mm -hmm. So really, that top lane for me is the lane to watch. Can Celery and Duraccio get off to one of their incredible starts with this type of lane? And OG are already trying to counteract it by just straight up pulling the wave. Like Ari just said, nope, we're not going to play this lane normally. They'll pull it between the towers. And funnily enough, bottom lane looks like to be a similar situation. So nobody really wants to lane. All right, let's talk about Axe. The only hero that actually matters in this game, Cinderin, because it's yep. not picked literally every game like all these other heroes. Uh, how do you like it, this game? Um, I think it's pretty good. I think it's very good against Void, and it has its moments against Muerta, but she's obviously being played as a support here, so not as important. Um, it's all right. I think what often is the problem for X is if his laning stage goes bad, I feel like his recovery curve is very steep, but when you see a faceless Void, you, you kind of know that you're going to have a good time, so I think that's already step one for Ace. Uh, and the other thing is, do you have some sort of strong follow-through for when you get a blink call? If you can't solo kill the cores, who's going to help you? In this case, the last track's pretty good. Weaver, being a tempo carry, is good at connecting on calls as well. Can easily reach the target you're on with Shikuchi and get a couple of swings in the kill. So I, I think it's all right. I'm not like, wow, this is the best X game ever, but it <laughs> it's all right. Well, we'll see how well it works this game. Hopefully it's amazing so we can see it a lot more. As Tomato, you can see right now, struggling a bit in the lane, only six CS so far. Yeah, that's a tough one for Void. And on the other side, uh, the Weaver 10 and five. So not, I mean, it's not that big of a difference yet. Still quite early on, but yeah, Void's one of those heroes, of course, that does get ramped up quite slowly. Uh, but the mid lane, you can see BZM. 11 and 3 right now as Quinn 16 and 6 on the Lesh. One of his patented heroes, Cinderin. Yeah, you love to see that. He invented it. <laughs> yep. It really bothers you when I say that. No. Yes. Okay. Well, nothing bothers you, but you know what I mean when I say that. That is very for, incorrect. For a robot, it bothers you. Go ahead. I, I didn't know anything. <laughs> Tomato's in a bit of trouble here. Nice we'll time. actually apply the Battle Hunger on his way out. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what often happens in these kind of lanes is that the, the carry, in this case the Void, will just be starved for regen. So you're going to have to start spending gold on the Tangos for maybe both Seb and Tomato because they're just going to constantly put pressure on him with Battle Hunger, with Flame Break. In this case, Tofu will even be adding a little bit more insult to injury here. We'll see who comes out on top of this exchange. Very awkward situation yep. for both teams, Someone's really. Someone's dying here. Tofu doing a lot of damage on his way out. Time dilation slows him down, but a time walk into the bash. Tomato will bring him down eventually. Does take a lot of damage, though. 
feels like an even trade to me. They lost a full wave, and they had to spend so many resources on getting that kill. Yeah. So it, it looked deliberate for Radiant Tofu to just drain resources away from them and, and keep them busy. Sorry, getting low, but we'll be okay. And for all intents and purposes, I actually think this top lane for OG is going quite well, you know? This is Entweaver. It's one of the strongest lanes that this team brings to the table. And Whisper on the Brewmaster, having the same CS as Weaver, is a, is a good first five minutes. I'm gonna put some pressure on Duraccio here. Oh nice dead my. shot. Yes, Duraccio. He will live. Only but... level four. Has Shikuchi to get away if he needs to, so just biding his time. Handy. Yeah, definitely a lot of pressure from OG. And Duraccio likely gonna get healed here now. Now we'll see how the rotations come for this six minute power rune. Uh, of course, wherever Quinn goes is where the rune will actually spawn. We've okay. learned that over thousands of games of Dota. You'll if you see. ask him, he will say he probably has 40%. No, we actually did ask him on our very prestigious podcast, Cinderin, which What did he happy say? Happy five-year anniversary. 45%. No, he says that he's very lucky, actually, which is a very unusual for a mid laner to admit. So he actually will be getting this rune, like I said, uh, 20 seconds away. Just keep track of that. Okay. And Tomato still struggling in the CS department. Uh, this is ramping up quite rapidly now, right? Oh, Axe, is, Axe is doubling him up. Axe also very good at farming stacks. Oh, Stead is making his way over here. Gets the Frostbite. Ari's making his way there too. Quinn, I think, pretty much resigned to his death. Loser fire. Order's going to be there, but BZM gets the better of him in the end. And now Tofu's in a lot of trouble. Coil's going to be expended. He's trying to take out BZM, but just out of reach. He's going to pop the Fairy Fire on BZM as well. Loser Orb, not going to clip the Bat Rider, but Tofu will eventually drop. It's going to be the cost of Tofu, or Ari, I should say. Uh-oh. As BZM now, another Illusory Orb dodges the Blood Grenade, gets the <laughs> Bounty Rune, is going to likely survive now, unless that range creep grows very long arms. And Seb and BZM will both get away together, hand in hand, as BZM abandons him. Good news for Quinn. He did pick up the six-minute rune while dead in the fountain. <laughs> so he's going to get that rune, as you said. Told you. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> this is quite the exchange here. Great great overall for OG. Making the rotate. Oh, hang on. BZM. BZM. It should be okay here. Yeah. Very <laughs> cocky, though, I have to say. I really like this dive. This is just vintage gaming gladiators, you know? Okay. Just several TPs, though. Forcing OG's hand a lot here. They yeah. will bring multiple heroes, as you the said. Calling. Whisper, not six yet. Whisper has the thunder clap, so Quinn is dead. A lot of pressure applied to that tier one, like you said, but it cost them their mid laner again. That's the second death in just about a minute. Very good response. And it's very, it's very crucial for OG to find these kills as well, because on the CS, they are definitely losing their lanes. So bringing the numbers to try to try to equalize things here and being successful. That will be the level six picked up for Whisper and the earlier move from Seb was the level six picked up for BZM. Now they're gonna try to help their next buddy. Bottom lane, BZM with a rotation on Coil and Seb coming over too. Just beautiful movements really all around from OG. Also finding the kill with Ari. Yep, Ace in a 1v3 trying to get away and Seb no mana on it's Seb pretty yet. pretty damn fast on Ace right now, I have to say. The chase is going to be long and arduous. Time dilation does clip him. It does nothing. It, it clips him. But he actually is he actually going to get away here? Nope. TP? Yes. Wow. Okay. Was not expecting that. Celery going to take the brunt of the primal split. And Whisper comes out of it, but the Thunderclap is enough to finish the job, Duraccio trying to get the trade. That is and he will do so with the help of the tower. Not a good trade for Whisper at all. Using your ult to trade Ench against a kill for the Weaver. Definitely not what he was looking for there. A, a quite uncharacteristic Radiant game state in this patch, right? It's 7-2 for the Radiant, nine minutes in, but they're behind 1k gold. Yeah. Uh, this is something we used to see a lot more in the past, but I feel like as of late, it's been very difficult for teams to win the lanes so convincingly on raw CS that the kill score at this point being this way is not a, a clear advantage for the team with the kills, but... Yeah, forcing it. 
Time walk as Duraccio oh, making no. his way over now, knowing that Tomato does not have his Kronos for either. He is chalked to the ground. Donk him up. And Ari looks to be next on the list. He actually is level six, so does pop pierce the veil. But eventually he will end up dropping as well. And the only question is, will it be another calling stack? Yes. Double kill for the red man. As Quinn looking to finish off this tier one tower mid with a diabolic edict, but BZM holding true. Using that fortification and the tier one tower still up and running for OG. You just love, I mean, this is just a flashback, right? To to get, when Gaiman were seemingly unbeatable for half a year. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching one of those games yeah, right that now. Yeah, true. Just non-stop pressure. OG, just keep teleporting to lanes to solve problems. Like, Stop! They're, All right, go ahead. They're just actually putting out fires, right? I, it feels like OG have barely made an offensive move. Every kill they've got has been on TP rotations and coming in to help heroes under pressure. And while they have succeeded in a lot of these, the bottom line is still, they are the ones under pressure constantly. They have barely had time to breathe in these 10 minutes. And it doesn't look like that's changing anytime soon. You've got Quinn constantly pressuring the mid tower. The Enchantress has taken bottom tower and is now invading the jungle. And she has a good friend in Duracho who's not afraid, like they talked about in the panel, very aggressive, very mobile carry player. All right, Tower finally does die. Coil onto two as the Axe makes his rotation over, but Quinn taking a ton of damage. Whisper gets off the primal split, a dead Leshrac again. Seb will be the trade for now. Now Ace on the run, Illusory Orb clips two. Tomato even makes his way over as well as Ace Trying to get the call, but not going to find anyone. Ends up dying to Rachio with a time. Okay. Time lapse did go off, but now the Chronosphere comes in, getting all three teammates in the area. But it results in a kill anyway. So Duraccio drops in addition. Three for one in favor of OG. Just once again, bringing the numbers. That was a five on four fight. The whole time, Batrider not connecting. Would have been a difference maker there if Tofu was able to play with the team, but had already headed all the way up to top in the distance to mid was just too far, so. <laughs> Tomato got level six during that, by the way. 11 minutes in on his carry faceless void. Whisper is toast, by the way. Yes, he is. Actually gonna lasso this one, interesting, but. Yeah, OG again. Keeping cool, under pressure. I really wanna commend them on their ability to combine their heroes and Having the level 5 Faceless Void there to begin with is quite uncharacteristic, right? But it turns into a big win for them to unlock that Chrono. Just seeing the replay here, Quinn struggling to deal with the Brewmaster split for now. That will get easier over time, of course, as he starts getting in. Particularly, the Bloodstone will be a major help for that problem. Yeah. But here's that Chrono from Tomato. Very Aww. nicely done. Sure, he catches his entire team, but this was the only way to kill the Weaver. Doesn't matter. Yep, he is forgiven. Hmm. Ace was trying to figure out what this chewing gum tasted like. There's something <laughs> weird about it. it. Tastes like saliva. Huh. Hmm. It's been in my mouth all day. Goodness. <laughs> so Radiant's obviously going to be pretty early item here for for Whisper on the brew. Yeah, I could have made a case for going the Vessel when you're playing against Leshrac and yeah. Ench. There there was a case for it, and even against the Axe, too. Uh, but we'll opt for that faster Radiance. Don't mind it. With how this game is playing out so far, I think he has to bridge the gap a little bit for Tomato to even get to play the game. Like, he's got mm -hmm. the, he got that one good Chrono that gave them a kill on the Weaver, but for the most part, this is recovery. For quite a long time, look at the absolutely poor net worth of the Void, almost the same as the enemy position for Bat. He is very far down the ladder here in sixth. And Void, not known to be a hero that comes back very well in terms of farming speed, oftentimes finds the comeback Baby. for team fights. Yeah, this is lovely that for That is Ax. orgasmic. That is a dagger on the way. Delicious. For Ace, almost Treat. has it. Level four in the call now, one would imagine. Are scanning. Call. Of course, also, we didn't really talk about this, but we've seen a lot of, uh, how to say, I feel like the Bracers and Nulls and Wraith Bands have become even more popular. This is an axe that did not go Vanguard. So he went double Bracer and into Blade Mail, and this will yeah. be a really good timing on the Blink Blade Mail as a result here with the phase. The Master. Do they have the damage? Primal split. split does go off. 
And Whisper, oh man, the Pulse Nova is, is ripping right through him. Still sticking around though. Gets one more stun with the Earth Panda as Tomato comes in in time dilation as well. More TPs coming in. Ace is ready, but the Chronosphere comes out. They have the damage to actually kill off the Lash. It's going to be close. Tomato has the time lock away, but they do get the kill first as BZM gets basically soloed by Ace. And now Tofu in the midst of a TP, but gets right clicked into Oblivion. Lone Survivor is Seb for OG. Oh dear. That did not work out the way they wanted. Just. The, the perfect illustration of the state of the game for the Faceless Void. Tomato did no damage in that chrono. We're going to see the replay here right there. I understand why they want to go for this here. It looks quite promising. They still have Primal Split for a while, but pay attention to this absolutely pitiful amount of damage coming out. And sure, they do get him in the end, but Tomato needs to expend the entire chrono, and then there's no it, there's no escape path afterwards, and Weaver is easily yeah. going to clean that one up, and OG cannot be happy with this development. On the kill score, it looks oh. even, but this game Not is Not over yet, from. apparently. Whisper dies again, close to his tier two tower. Seb gets off a decent ult with the coil being applied to several heroes. Might be the death of Celery, although nice, he's nice living Seb. through it with the nature's attendance. And now Seb might pay the ultimate price. Ace comes in with another taunt, and down goes the Crystal Maiden. Oh, nice silence, though. The Waning Rift is enough to get the right clicks off onto Duraccio. So OG gets something out of this dive, but... Still a 6k lead for Gaiman. And, and this is pretty scary, scary territory for OG. Yeah, the, the mindset for Gaiman Gliders in this game is whenever Bruce Split is on cooldown, I feel like they can just run at heroes. I think that's that's what they're saying internally right now. Okay, if they don't have Brew ult, and especially if they also don't have Chrono, just run them over around the map. Like, what does OG actually have in the tank to fight you with? Brewmaster doesn't have an item. Void has no farm. So, effectively, you're dealing with a puck and a little bit of damage coming in from a potential Muerta ult. Aside from that, you just do whatever you want. And they're very much so trying to... You also see it in the warding, right? Like, very aggressive warding down the mid lane as well as in the radiant side of the jungle to the bottom half that they're trying to get information as much as possible about making aggressive movements and just maintaining and growing this lead. The Holy shit, Ace is farmed. I mean, yes, I, I shouldn't is. be so surprised. It's Ace with a good matchup. This is standard. This is classic Ace stuff. This is only going to get worse, you would imagine. Feels like old classic Ace from last year. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> As recently, yeah. it's not just Ace, of course, but Gaming Glass has been... Okay, the call comes in, and the damage is more than enough. Gracious, me oh my, Ari will get out, but... Yeah, they lose a valuable member again from OG's side. Coil comes in from BZM, but more of a defensive measure, it feels like. It's the flame break from Tofu, trying to cover Quint a bit here. He's taking a lot of damage, though. He's also pushed dealing back. a lot. Pulse Nova starting to rip through them, but he dies anyway. One for two in favor of Gaiman for the time being. So they do have the damage to get through Quint. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Let's see if Gaiman want to get a little bit more aggressive now. Looks like Eternal Shroud is going to be on the side of Ace soon enough. Yeah, I, makes a lot of sense, right? Look at the, the matchups that he has. There's no serious right-click damage to worry about. There's so much magical damage from the Puck, from the Radiance coming in. Of course, the, the CM and Wertz are also largely magical, so... This is going to allow him to play way more aggressively. Oh, man, Tomato. Oh, Tomato has to use Chrono. Oh. Yeah. Is oh. he even living from this? I guess he, he can find a path to his base. Tofu's close. Oh, he's a he's fucked. call, chop, goodbye, oh, well. Tomato. That's a squashed Tomato. <laughs> Cherry Tomato. Mm. Lovely. Whisper. He's now going to get gone on. Split Earth and Lasso, not the greatest of layering, but the call comes in from Ace. Another choppity chop. How many stacks does he have? Five. five. I thought he had seven. I feel like he's killed so many Radiant's heroes. He has eight kills, only five of them dunks. What a noob. Yeah. Got to step it up. Tofu in trouble. Tofu in the grave. Yeah, OG able to get one support, but they're going to need to get way more than that. I think As this lead is getting worse and worse. I think Ace has a lot of freedom now to actually make almost usually over-aggressive plays because of the, not just his net worth, but the types of matchups that he has with how good the Shroud is here. I would love to see Ace just really getting a little bit 
cocky, honestly, I think would be a good look in this game. Just very much not let OG get any sort of foothold once again. For OG, wait for the split, play the Radiance, and see if you can find some sort of a coil in an extended fight where you slowly but steadily whittle them down and then have Void come in in the end because he is not going to be... You're doing yourself no favors by having Tomato start the fight, I think. It, no. There's not enough follow-up damage in the Chrono that people are going to yes, die, at least not the targets you want to find. So I think he has to play a little bit more and letting the fight develop, have people drop to half health and then find a good dilation and maybe ultimately a Chrono. Now, it looks like that is indeed the game plan for OG right now. Grouping up as four and playing the Void completely on the opposite side of the map. But if Tomato were to join now, he has no health. So I actually think this fight is not playable. Oh, BCM. If they if Game and find them here, this is going to be a disaster for OG. Oh, Sep will Sep. The be the target. The lamb. Uh, he's done. Chop number six for Ace. Ends you. Ironic for Seb to be called and killed by Axe, of course. Yep, his patented. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> I mean, if you think of one axe, I mean, I, I feel yeah. like it is Seb, though, right? <laughs> Surely. Ace. All right, here Another we go again. Call comes in, dead shot, though, but the split earth is there to layer and the chop. Actually, I couldn't tell if the chop was completely successful or not. Either way, the kill goes the way of Gaiman again. Ari now, flame broken and lassoed. Looking for the call. Oh, yeah, that feels good. And just. Oh, the call onto the high ground. That's what I'm talking about. This is what I want to see from Ace. <laughs> there was a 0% chance of killing there, but he sends the message. Yeah, it's, to it's the adrenaline. When you're getting all of these culling stacks in there, oh, yeah. I know you don't have experience with that in your pro play, but I it feels a, really good. My axe is actually quite good. No cap. Okay. Also not cap. Cap's axe is not as good as mine. <laughs> It's good to know. I would probably claim it's quite good, but... You sound like a real narcissist right yeah. now. Yeah, I'm the best. Gaiman up 10k. And the axe has certainly worked out in their favor. Oh, yeah. It's definitely been the story of the game. It it has this tendency to, when axe has a good game, he just draws all attention to himself. Step, Step is you have died. Also drawing attention to himself. You have died, young man. Oh, wait a second. Tomato comes in with a double chrono, trying to focus down the edge, but that's a little bit slow. Dead shot with the coil. And it looks like OG will punish this move from Gaiman. That was such... <laughs> I almost want to say obvious bait. Like, Sep just placed himself in the middle of the map and started killing a centaur creep, but it worked. It worked. Ace has had so many successes in a row that he was just seeing another target, but... That time, OG were ready for the counterplay. It did cost them a lot, though. Cost them all their big ults. So now we're back to another minute and a half to two minutes of playing keep away. I mean, when you're playing Axe and you're snowballing, it's almost like it's like trying to kick an addiction. You really have to keep going for those calls. And it doesn't matter yeah. if you know if it's a bait. You know you have to do it. Something in your head is telling you so. As Seb, well, they get the dust off, the silence oh, from the that's calling. Very good calling. And is that going to be enough to kill off the Weaver? Indeed. Great so calling. it only cost them Seb. Yeah, we've talked and so much OG. about Ace. We haven't really been keeping as much track of the Weaver, who obviously got that Orchid and is now closing on the Gleipnir. And Lesh with his Bloodstone toward BKB build on that side. Tomato closing in on Manta. Not too far away. That will be a pretty big help if you can be Clutch Manta dodging a call, perhaps, or getting away from the Weaver Orchid is the more obvious usage. Oh, if he gets spotted oh, here. Oh. They saw him. They saw him. No Uh-oh. No way. Oh, my goodness. He Lasso is done. into call. TPs are coming. The chop is there again, though. The coil only on the one. Breaks it immediately. Now trying to walk away. Calling is placed as well, but no follow-up for OG. They lose their void again. And Celery is just chilling. Just farming now on his inch. The map is... I think it's fair to say that OG has had access to maybe a third of the map, or 40%, the last 10 minutes. And they're doing the best they can with it to, to try to keep this afloat. And they've done a pretty admirable job of not falling behind any further on the gold in the last five, but... I was not really seeing any meaningful progression that is inspiring a lot of hope that they can 
start crossing the river anytime soon. So this will be the first rock man of the game. Imagine the Aegis will just be going on to Rachu, and we know how he likes to play with that one. <laughs> the exact same as without. Yeah. Very aggressive. <laughs> Literally nothing changes. Yeah. He has one mode. Yep. They're going to see BZM here with their skeleton orchid. Yep. Okay, but he gets off the blink Ooh. just in time Ooh. for the damage proc. I mean, OG keep in mind spine. that this is a game. I mean, you do have a Lesh on the team. I know he wasn't there, but that is a, an amazing Aegis carrier. But if you put it on the Weaver, maybe uh, maybe it's a Duraccio. I actually, <laughs> I actually like it better on Weaver this particular game than on Lesh. And I would usually okay. agree with you that you almost always put this on the Lesh track. But the thing is, Lesh track in this game is more likely to survive if initiated on than the Weaver. He's just gonna, if he gets his Bloodstone off and has Pulse Nova running, he can survive a ton of this. He can heal a lot from the Brulings, he can heal a lot from the Void that's hitting him. And the Weaver can just act as a frontline vision giver for the Axe in the back. So I actually like it a lot this way around. Um, if Lesh gets initiated on and somehow does die, I feel like OG need to pump all their resources into it, and then they're just going to lose the following part of the fight to a Weaver just having free reign. Because yeah. you're not killing the Lesh without chronoing him, I think, anymore. Ace Mari also with it. a Bloodstone. Oh, you love to see that on yes. the old axe. That is beautiful. Spell Lifesteal. You got AoE on the call. AoE. Beautiful choice, young Love man. that. That guy's a boss. Oh, I thought you were going to say a bot. It's like, what? No, you're the bot. On Cold Foil. Only onto one, but they will clean up Tofu pretty fast. It'll cost them Seb, so one for one to start this fight. Remember, Aegis, of course, on the side of Gaiman. And that's Duraccio. Continuing to play very aggressive. BZM going to the other side, so a bit of segregation here. If Duraccio can somehow find a, an angle into this, just the, getting Gleipnir onto anyone, really is a good setup for the Axe to follow through. It will force the Manta from the Void as well, who actually still doesn't have it. Tomato is still so far, far behind par. And it begs the question, should he actually have gone for like a catch-up Midas? He, oh my god, he's actually just dead to Weaver, isn't he? No. Nope, never mind. Surely not, Cinderman. How did he deal so little damage? Dyer's top tower is under attack. That's for you to answer. You're yeah, the analyst. I, I don't know. That looked like a situation where the Weaver was going to do more than that, huh? I know the dead shot clipped Duraccio in the end, but I'm surprised he didn't do more of a dent into Tomato there with the items that he has. Yep, dead shot. Ace. Now on to Ace. It's tanky. 40 and half HP is Tomato closing the gap. Has the Chrono, of course, will use it. The rest of his team will walk into it this as they do. Awkward. Very poorly played there as Ace now calls, looking for a potential chop, but Tomato time walks away. And Ace was using the Bloodstone there. The coil going to snap, and he is still very tanky, but eventually OG gets what they came for. Tomato, though, lassoed and soloed, essentially, by Tofu. Really unfortunate death if you're an OG fan. And they lost Brew somewhere along the lines here. Yeah, Ari's in trouble, too. He's going to get scouted out and yield. Reinforcements are arriving via the Weaver. He will yield Man, again. Tofu and he is, is very dead. owning. <laughs> yep. He is actually owning on this support bat. I thought uh, Gaiman were going to bring more resources to help the Axe there. That was a 20-second chase, at least, from OG to find that kill. But as you said, they found the Brew on the other side of the map, and they kept the waves pushed out. Uh, perhaps TP's war on cooldown. I think a Leshrec arriving there could have spelled complete disaster for OG. Now it only spells uh, half a disaster, but still pretty bad. This is now going to be top tier 2. It's going to be the Tormentor steal. This one will be going the way of Toad. Perfect. Changes absolutely nothing. It's good for OG, as a matter of fact. Now, the net worth of Game and Gladiators is higher if they were to kill the bat. That's true. Is, is, is it just the attacking sticky napalm? I need to double check this. Does it change anything else? Flaming it no longer, longer disarms, disarms you. Every second attack gives one napalm stack. I mean, it does have its... It, we're, we're saying... We're talking about it like it is just absolute trash, which is not the case. It still has its uses. It's just... Among support shards, I would definitely put this as like one of the three worst on average, because Batrider mostly doesn't really hit heroes very much. You're just playing flanking, you're casting your spells from range and not getting involved with your actual hero. But 
No, sometimes you will do a little bit of poke here and there. I guess it also helps it a little bit for farming speed. Yeah, that's good. Every support needs a farming uh, mechanism now, yeah, Sundaran. That is, that is very true. Need to push your waves, need to jungle, mm -hmm. need to get your six slot items. Yes. Need to do more damage to creeps. Ace, finding Nothing. the motto, but the protection is there from Ari. Okay. This will be another long Whisper chasing coming sequence, in. it feels yes. like. Yes, Teller's in the vicinity as well. Tomato has to be careful. The counter helix is owning him right now as Seb with a bit of a zoning ult. As they're just trying to keep their distance from Ace, but they really want to kill him as Tofu gets the initiation again onto the void. Yule's up into the air though. Is this enough damage? Yes, Tomato dies again. And guess who's still alive? Ace. They couldn't finish the job. Okay. If your axe can do this, imagine if the team is there from the beginning, right? He literally yeah. played one v four chop for ten seconds. Ten he still didn't die. Fax. Oh my goodness. Beast. I, I don't know. OG just don't have solutions. They just can't kill this guy. They need a full on four v one for half a minute. Good amount of damage from BZM, but. Your buildings are gonna melt here very shortly. Backdoor protection is gone. Fortification activated now. The counter fort aggressively from Gaiman. They wanna keep going. Call on step. That's the call to start. Duraccio coming with his BKB already activated. They focus down step right off the bat. He's dead for 40, no buyback. Duraccio time lapse. Gets a decent amount of HP back. Is it normal for Muerta to get, uh, a support Muerta to get Moonshard uh, as a second item, Cinderin. That sounds like a rhetorical question. The answer is no. <laughs> that is not normal. Okay. Just check. <laughs> Radiance scanning. Because Ari does have moon shard. I think I think it's a good pickup though. I think he's identif he's making the right call here that like, we don't my void is used <laughs> we don't have enough damage how can i get the most dps Th per gold this is like a pub Probably choice it. right here very uh, toxic choice he's going moon shard into daedalus okay here's the real question do you think he asked permission from tomato he's like tomato it, would it offend you <laughs> if i go moon shard on my muerta tomato i think you <laughs> suck no offense <laughs> we love tomato of course yeah he's, i mean he's just honestly the thing is, there are just some games where you die. Oh my um, god, Quinn with the double split. Earth, Tomato's dead. Ari, the moon shard, helping him out here survive a little bit longer with that night vision. Has been killed. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, it, it's just his conditions are just bad, right? I, I don't think Tomato has played a particularly bad game. It's not really, really, really difficult. No. Tomato's so. a very good player. He's very attractive as well. That's probably more important for pro players these days. Is that caught off guard? He's going to go down. It'll be the trade for Tofu. Shortest lasso in history. Yeah, the lasso doesn't last too long there as Ace pops the Bloodstone. Whisper, Primal Split. Splitter though coming in from Quinn. Chop number one from Ace into a call. And Seb with a rare failed voice line. He thought they had the axe. When Seb starts voice lining in the middle of the fight, he thinks the fight is a win. <laughs> I've noticed this pattern. It's oh, really? always the same. Huh. And uh, he was like, oh, you you thought you were going to get a good trade there, huh? And yeah, they were. So Radiance bit of a misread there from the Frenchman. It's going to cost him at least Elena Barracks. And more than likely, Game and Gladiators are not Radiance stopping here. Down. With these two heroes dead for half a minute on the Puck and the Brew, they want to force these buybacks. Damage is unavailable without the Puck. Radiance middle tower. Under attack. See if they keep going. Looks like it. So Mitt is next on the menu. Call from Ace onto Crystal Maiden. Mr. Seb in a lot of trouble. He's dead again. No tipping this time. Uh, he and didn't yeah. think they were winning that. Fight. That'll be two sets of racks. Although the fortification does come out. But yeah, delays the inevitable whisper. Okay, Ace nice going in for the call, but the Manta dodge from Tomato. Time uh, dilation onto Ace. He's okay. just going to run away, though. And Gaiman, they secure both sets, and now they can likely reset uh, Roche up in about a minute. And at that point, OG, I would assume, have to contest the Roche. Absolutely have to. Would you agree if I said this really... <laughs> 
takes me back a year with gaming. I feel like this is the exact same game yeah. that they used to play. Yeah, for sure. Same logic, same draft uh, approach as well. They're last Pace. picking Ace into an insane matchup. They're getting strong lanes. They're playing really fast. They're moving their carry. They're taking the outer towers early and they're nonstop brawling. This is effectively what a lot of people wanted to see from Gaiman for a very long time, but they just haven't necessarily been able to enforce this type of gameplay in a lot of their games. Um, but this is really textbook stuff from the time that this team was the, flat out just the best in the world for half a year. I'd like to go back and see what their average game length was during that time. Yeah, it this was. This is a really long patch right now. Yeah. So the game might have ended already last year, right? Oh yeah, it would have. I think they would have won this game in at 25 back then, probably. With the same heroes, mm -hmm. I I'm pretty sure. But yeah, the game has slowed down a bit with the bigger map, etc. but... Let's see. Came in looking for the kill. The killing blow, crossing the map, five-man smoke. They obviously know where OG are because nobody's defending base, so there's only really one place OG can be, and this is the all-in. Roche. Last ditch effort. Roche is way, this Force is gonna be, uh, okay. This fight That's is breaking really the hard. Smoke. BZM with a nice waning rift into coil onto two. Looks like Seb is going to be the sacrifice again, although Tomato coming in with a nice chrono onto three heroes. Be able to take out Tofu to start. Now trying to focus down the Weaver. Silenced up and down goes Duraccio. No buyback. As Ari left all alone now will be surrounded, eventually brought down it seems. As the Pulse Nova will be able to get the kill. Not bad from OG. Yeah. That was about a 5k swing. They find the big kill on the Weaver. They get the buyback out of the Bad Rider with the way that opened up. Uh, I don't know how Duraccio was not able to PKB there. He didn't die in the chrono, right? No. He came out of it. And he, he was never definitely got silenced for like three or four seconds. Uh, was his, had he misclicked his BKB earlier and it was on cooldown or what? Because I, I thought that was just it. I thought he was just going to get his spells off and just crush the fight because they didn't kill him in the chrono. But I don't, I don't know. Whatever it was. Because it's on an eight seconder. So he's definitely had it for long enough and used it. Anyway. As it stands, OG, OG with a little bit of a... They're surviving, but they still lose the Roche, and this will be Aegis plus Cheese for the Lesh. And he will also be finishing his Wind Waker as soon as he gets to that. They probably thought he had Aegis already. The Rachio. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> Playing like he has the Aegis. I mean, you don't want to use BKB on first life, Cinderin. Whisper. Oh, boy. Berserker's call into Deathity Chop. Yep, never say that again. Deathity, Deathity. Now, Quinn and company. They will have uh, their Weaver back now. Just needs to get to the other side of the map. We'll TP to the outpost. And now they can try to secure this game number one with the Megas. Tomato, no Chrono. And even if they had it, they don't really have the greatest of combos, I would say. Like, the damage in the chrono is not particularly great. They get the tier 3. And it's set. Now, yeah. lassoed. What number chop is this, Cinderin? 9. 13. Good try. Yeah. It's as if you have not been watching. Oh. Sorry. I was... I can't count. If understandable. We already have a, an upgraded Yules as the Berserker call from Ace. No chop this time. Too much damage. Damage <laughs> overload for him. Just like that, it's a five versus two, not including the Aegis or the Cheese. BZM and Tomato, the last remaining members of OG. The Chronosphere onto three heroes into zero damage. Pretty much been the story of the game as GG is called. So, game it with a much needed win. Should point that out again. OG coming into this three and one, so they've been doing extremely well. Whereas Gaiman getting off to a very bad start, uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic for them, one and three. So.